All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to probably the final tier list uh, for FTL that I'm going to be doing because there simply is nothing else to rank. Um, I mean, we could do like the backgrounds tier list or music tier list, I guess. But, you know, in all seriousness, these are probably the last two. And we're going to be, like I said, two. We're doing a two for one special because both these tier lists are kind of small. We're going to be starting with the races in the game, all the different aliens. And then we're going to be finishing with all the drones in the game. Now, we'll talk more about the drones when we get there, but I don't use drones nearly as much in many of my builds. They're not as fun for me, and I think they're a little bit harder. or Not hard, they're just more... They're not as useful as some other strategies, but they're still good, and I still respect them, so we will be getting to those. But we will be starting with the races first, and this is a tier list made by me, because there was no tier list, so I had to make one. So follow me on Twitter if you want. All right. So let's get started off. We have the Crystal Men right out of the gate. Crystal are really, really good. Now, they are rare, but I'm not going to rank them based on that. Crystal are really, really good for a couple of reasons. One, they have more HP than humans, less than rocks, but they still have 125 HP, which is a good amount, so they're decently bulky. They are slower than the other races, but they're still faster than the rocks. They have, like, a... They're slowed by 20% or something like that. And they also take half damage from no oxygen. So they're really good stat wise. Plus they have the lockdown ability, which lets you, you know, seal them in a room with whoever else is in there. Roshark style, which is cool. And it actually is pretty useful for, you, you can lock people in with you if you don't want them to escape or you can lock people out, which is probably what you would use it more. So if they're suffocating or you don't want them to get into whatever system the crystal's in. So they're really, really good. And yes, they're rare, but realistically, you all, like if you get a crew, a crystal crew member, you're, you're living. They're, they're an easy S tier, I think. Okay. Next are the NG. This is a hot one because NG are really, really good too. Um, their thing is they repair twice as fast, which is huge. However, they also are not very good at combat. They do half as much combat damage. However, their negatives are not that bad. The positives far outweigh the negatives. They really... They're just... They're really, really good. They have a ton of blue events that let them do a ton of, like, they upgrade your ship so much, you know, you got the virus event, which is undefeated, such a good event, and you have a ton of ones, like, have the NG talk to the other NG, have the NG go calm the rioters down, blah, 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 like, there's a ton of stuff they do, and there's really no way to say it, but I think they're also just an easy S tier, they're, they're so good, oh, this is disgusting, I hate that one has a PNG file and one's not, I made the tier list, so I can't really blame anyone but myself, whatever, you get the idea. So yeah, NG Easy S tier, so good. Humans, I think, might be the most B tier, by definition, race. They're not bad, but they pretty much do nothing special. They gain skill slightly faster, which is good. But if you've ever watched FTL or played it yourself, you know that like, you gain skills pretty easily, for the most part. Especially if you're there from the start, as a starting crew. So gaining skills faster, while obviously a net positive, it doesn't move the needle for you that much, really. Um... They're still definitely good. There's literally no downsides. But the other thing is they don't have any blue events. There's like maybe one or two in the whole game. And they're very niche to get. So I think it's the definition of a B tier. There, there's no negative associated with them at all. But, you know, they're just very boring. That's kind of the point. All right, moving on to the Lanius. The Lanius are an interesting one for me. They are very cool. I like them a lot. They suck out all the oxygen in the room that they are stationed in or walking through, whatever. And they don't need oxygen to survive, which is very, very interesting. It can make them kind of hard to use in conjunction with other crew members because they obviously suffocate their fellow crew. This does make them good at boarding. However, they're not like that's a good trait to have, but it's not as good as you might think because they have no boosted stats like the rock or the mantis. So they're pretty much just like a human fighting more or less. Um, and yeah, they're just kind of like, I don't know. It, it, they're, they're really interesting to me, to be honest. I respect them a lot and the oxygen sucking out again it is really good, you know, but yeah. And plus they don't even, they have a slower movement speed as well. Not, not by a lot, but they are slightly slower. So I think they're actually not that good. I'm going to, I'm going to say it. Plus if you're doing a boarding run, you can't use one unless you only have Lanius, because they suck the oxygen out 
with your Mantis or your Rock or whatever. And it makes it really hard. So I actually don't think they're that good. Um, they're not bad. Uh, this D tier, I don't think we're going to put anything into D tier. But I'm going to leave it because it, it, it's proof that like D tier is bad and none of the races are bad outright. I think I'm going to put them in C tier. You know, the oxygen sucking ability is really good. But it, it it it's a crutch to you in a lot of situations. And even like with on your own ship, if you have a Lanius and there's just, they're working on shields or whatever, you need someone else to come help fix them. Sorry, you can't because there's no oxygen. So I, I think situationally, it can be good. Definitely, but I think a lot of times it actually ends up just being a pain in your ass more more than more often than not. They're not bad; they're still good, and they have very you know situational uses that are uh, really really helpful. So they're not bad; they're in C tier, which is like I'd probably rather pick most other races than them, but they're still you know again not bad. Mantis, we're gonna have to have a discussion about this one. Mantis are amazing if you are boarding; they are literally un undefeated, unparalleled. They do double damage in combat; they move twice as fast. They have, you know, 100% base HP. They're amazing. However, if you are not doing a boarding run, they're not that good because they repair at half speed. And if you're not boarding, you know, yes, you might get boarded and you can fight back a little easier. I'll give you, I'll give them that. But most of the combat and most of the events in FTL are ship versus ship. And there is boarding. Obviously, there's plenty of it. If you've seen videos, my videos are, are played the game yourself, right? But I, I think that this conditional usefulness makes them probably a B tier. Now, again, if they're if you're boarding, if you're having a boarding run or anything, S tier, easy, easiest S tier of my life. But because of the fact, like you, you, you tell me you can have a, a Mantis or an NG, and I don't have boarding, bro. Why would I ever take the Mantis? Not having that repair speed, you'd think it wouldn't be that bad. It is terrible. It's literally so bad. So I, I think I gotta I gotta bring them down a little bit for that. You know. It's unfortunate, but the situationalness of a Mantis is what really kind of keeps it from the top tiers. Okay, Rock. See, Rock is an example of they're really good for boarding, but they have other uses as well. So I think I'm going to put them in the A tier because they have more HP. Okay, awesome. They're immune to fire. Awesome. You can put out fire super easily. Their downsides, of course, they are slow as a bag of dicks. It is absurd. It doesn't, it does matter. You know, a lot of times if you're just running into the med bay, you're impatient. It's annoying, but whatever. But you need to get them across the ship to repair something. That can be a problem. And that actually keeps them out of S tier for me. You know, it, it's enough, a noticeable speed decrease that it can actually make them kind of ineffectual in some ways. However, still an A tier, still very good. The HP bonus is awesome. Plus there is a staggering amount of blue events as well. You know, things with fire, things with, again, controlling the riot. You can use a rock too, I'm pretty sure. So the, the sheer amount of blue events that it gets is really really good and that keeps an a tier along with most of its abilities the speed is kind of a bummer keeps it out of s and but other than that it's, it's a super good race you know and i always like to have a rock love to see it slugs i think i'm gonna put in the c tier as well now let me explain why slugs abilities are as follows they can reveal the enemy locations in the ships and uh, like you know enemy ships and they cannot be mind controlled so the main problem with slugs is that their abilities don't stack. You have a ship full of NGs, you know, you love it. They all repair super fast, they all do a bunch. You know, you got a ship full of rocks, you're immune to fire, right? Even a ship full of mantis, you can just slaughter anything with your with your claws. Ship full of slug doesn't do much for you. I guess oh, you're immune to mind control, but okay, who cares? The telepathic ability they have, you only need one slug for it to really count. So because of that, like, I, I, if I already have a slug, I don't need another one. And it makes them less versatile than many of the other races. And the mind control thing is like good. They can't be control, mind controlled, right? But the enemy ship's just going to mind control someone else, right? Now, obviously, if you put them somewhere like weapons so they don't get mind controlled, right? That's a good strategic play. I respect that. But it's just like you put them in weapons, then they're going to mind control your shield guy or your pilot. And that's just as annoying. So. The immunity to mind control doesn't, it like, it helps the slug himself, but it doesn't help you use the captain that much. So I do like them and I actually really like having one on my, my ship, but they're just not that useful to have that many of. Um, but again, they're still good. Nothing is D tier. I'm just going to spoil it right now. The Zoltan here is a really hard one for me. I love a Zoltan. They give you a free power slot, which is God tier. 
you can get above your reactor limit if you have a bunch of Zoltan. I mean, obviously Zoltan, like, ships have the, you know, Zoltan shield, but that doesn't have anything to do with the race, so we're going to ignore that. So the Zoltan, I mean, the prob the biggest problem is they have way less health. They have 75% health, which is pretty noticeable in battle and means they die super quickly. They also explode when they die, which is, I mean, you can do kind of some niche builds where you have a clone bay and you, you have a boarding crew of Zoltan and they go, they're like little mini bio bombs. You just go blow them up and respawn them. But that's a pretty niche strategy. And generally having, if you're like, Zoltans are way better for the power instead of eating them as like bio bombs. You can do it, but having said that, they're so good. It's between S and A tier for me. The power itself is so good. They are brought down a little bit by the, you know, the less health, but I, th I think I got to put them in S tier. These two, I mean, mostly these two races. Crystal I look for as well, but they're so rare. These two races I'm always on the hunt for. I, you need one of each, more or less, on every run you play, I would say. The more of these you have, the better. Um, so I think th those are definitely S tier. Yeah, so I, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with that list. Again, none of the races are bad. I'm, I'm not trying to slander any race that anyone likes. You know, I feel bad about the Mantis, but I, I can't argue with myself. Like, it, it's true. You know, they're really, they're so much worse if you're not fighting anything. But yeah, so I think that's going to be the list for the races for me. Again, this is all personal. It's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Um... But yeah, having said that, let's move on to our second tier list, which is the drones. So the drones, like I said, I don't use them as much, and I don't think they are, a lot of them at least, are not that useful, which makes going for drones a little less viable. But I do respect a decent amount of them, so we are going to be getting into this. Right off the bat, we have the anti-drone drone. This thing's pretty bad. <laughs> We're starting off pretty bad. It's just... It's not that useful, right? It's very situational. To spend a drone part to stop a drone that is attacking you is... It's just not that, like, applicable. I don't know, man. I just never use this thing, and I don't think it's really that good. It, it works, so it, it can't be the worst thing of all time, but it, it's just... Like, you're getting attacked... Usually, um, save the flagship. Usually, most ships will have one drone, Okay. One drone, it's going to be like a beam drone, which can't get through any shields, or like a combat drone, probably. That, that's all it stops, more or less. And if you have a drone system, why don't you just like put out your defense drone to stop like you know these type of drones coming? I don't know. It just it's too much for me. I I, I don't I don't think it's that good. I'm gonna put it in D tier. Maybe I just haven't used it enough, but I maybe that's also a sign that's bad because I've just never used it. Now, I don't know which one is the boarding and which is the anti-personnel. I'm going to say this is the boarding since this is the Ion Intruder drone. So this is going to be the anti-personnel drone on your own ship. This drone has uses, you know, if you're getting boarded. But, like, the way I see it is this isn't used for a strategy. It's used for defense. For example, using a beam drone or, like, a combat drone or boarding drones, you know, if can be applied to a, a, a strategy to attack ships. This one is like, if you get boarded, you can use it. So if you're not getting boarded, there, there's no use to have it. And it does a good job at what it does. I'll give it that, right? So I'll probably put it above this one. But like, you would never get this to be like, let's build around the anti-personnel drone. Like, that's just idiotic. That makes no sense. So I respect it. And like I said, it does its job pretty well. It's got a ton of HP, you know, it doesn't need oxygen, right? But... So I'm going to put it in C tier. I, I don't think it's really something you want to go out of your way to buy, right? You're never going to be like, damn, I need more crew to defend, so I'm going to buy this. Like, just buy crew, right? And again, it's a roguelite, so you might get not lucky, and you might have to do different stuff on different runs. But on average, I really think this is just more or less irrelevant. But it does its job, so whatever. All right, beam one and two drones. So these are both pretty good. In terms of drones, I like having offensive drones. Defensive drones are really good as well, but I think most of the like flying drones like this are, are what I like in the drone system. So the drone 2 takes 3 power, which is a lot. But, hmm. I think 
I think it's still kind of a case of like, you know, using the the drone one is going to serve you better for your power, right? Because three power on a drone system is good, but it, well, I, I think it's probably better actually, maybe. Like when drone systems are different than weapons, right? You usually only have one drone out, maybe two, if you have like a, a system repair drone. You kind of just invest in one. So if you have the power to make three work, it's going to be way better. It, it moves, you know, slower than this one, but it does a ton of damage. And it's got a beam length of like 20 or something, which is like super, or 40 even. I don't know, something super long like that. Maybe this one's 20. Yeah, I think this one's 20 and this one's 40, which is a lot. So I'm going to put it, it's one of the better drones. I don't know if it's S tier, I'm going to put it in A. And the this one, I think this the speed at which it moves, if you can get their shields down is kind of similar to this one in terms of power level. Would I put them on the same level though? Like obviously this one is better, but it's the power cost. But I think since you, like I said, you, you kind of go all or nothing on a drone system and you kind of have one drone out at a time, most of the time. I think this one is a little worse because it can't pierce shields. You do need a lot of weapons to supplement it. But if it gets through shields, it's gonna do a ton of damage. It's just gonna keep them pressured. You know, these things, when they when the, the enemies sick them on me, I, I get scared. <laughs> like, if my shields are down, and shambles. So, Combat 2 Drone, the regular Combat 2 Drone, it's pretty goddamn good, I will say. Unlike the Beam 2 Drone, it takes 4 power, which is kind of a lot. And that's when it starts getting a bit much for me. You know, this one taking 3 power and doing kind of 1 or done, you're, you're dialed into this one. I can deal with that. Four power is kind of a lot of power to put into drone control. Especially when, like, it does do damage, but it doesn't do... It's All drones, let me just say, let me back up. All drones are way better when their shields are down. Okay, they don't really do well to take down shields themselves, obviously. So, I would rather have a three power than a four power. I think this will end up doing more damage and more good for you than this one. It's still really good, obviously. So, I'm going to put it in B tier. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. I, I think... The power cost itself is is a bit too much, to be honest. Combat Drone 1 takes 2 power. I think it's about the same. I think the power offset for the amount of damage it does equals them out. Low key. This one moves slower. It doesn't shoot as fast. But you only need 2 power to run it. Which is like, when you buy drone systems, like you're pretty much good to go already. So, yeah. I, I, think, it's, I think it's just kind of the, the better play. To be honest, to just go with the the, the one, the level one one. Obviously, if you get the level two, it does a lot more damage, right? But yeah, I think that's it. Oh wait, what? Oh, this is the defense drone. I was like, what? Okay, defense drones are really really good as well. I think we're gonna start with this one, the the type one. I think this is an S tier drone. If you have drone control and you have this, popping this out pretty much just negates like every ship until the flagship because this shoots down well most ships only have one missile on average maybe they got two sure but unless they're the exact same missile launcher they're fine at different times right this one shoots down missiles and it it can miss like you know five percent of the time just based on you know where the missile comes and where the drone is but more often than not this will just shoot down drones cost one drone part last the whole battle it saves you so much damage now the flagship you know it's a little different right because it shoots three missiles but bef even still shooting down one of the missiles that means you only have two missiles to dodge you got a good dodge chance right you, maybe you're good this can save you a ton of damage i think it's amazing to have it's pretty cheap to to use power wise this is i think one of if not the best drone in my opinion and then we'll talk about the rest be patient but i think the defense drone mark one is amazing defense drone mark two is less good for a couple of reasons. Let me explain. It's still A tier. It's still amazing. It shoots way faster and it can shoot down multiple projectiles in one volley from the enemy ship, which is really good. The problem is it takes way more power, obviously, as, you know, all things kind of do here. But also it can get distracted, I guess, is what uh, what I would say. You got miss a missile coming in, right? And you got lasers coming in. This thing can shoot down lasers and ions, which is good. But if it shoots down a laser that was going to hit your shield for no damage anyways, 
and then it misses the missile or like it shoots two laser or like something happens like that and you get hit by the missile anyways you're just pissed off at this thing you're like dude the lasers were going into the shield not doing anything shoot the missile that's happened to me many times so that kind of annoys me sometimes it's still amazing but it does mean that it, it sometimes it can just not do its job as well despite being better and it moves you know it shoots insanely fast so it's still amazing but i think this one is just more bang for your buck is what it comes down to this one's three power this one's two power so i just think you're going to be doing better with the the mark one one on this okay so the anti-ship fire drone pretty good as well in fact it may be better than these ones yes these ones do damage but this one starts fires obviously um it does take three power as well but the the beauty of fires is distracting the enemy ship while you do damage in other ways, right? Yes, you can burn the whole ship down and get the crew killed rewards. But I think overall, fires do really well to distract the enemy, make sure they can't fix stuff, hurt them over time, just ruin their life, right? And that's what drones do best is they don't take down shields, right? You take down the shields, you take down the systems yourself, and then you have a drone supplementing that, keeping their systems down putting pressure on the enemy ship and this drone does an amazing job of that so if you're doing a drone build i think the the fire drone is really pretty good is it s tier it might be close for drones it might be close would i rather have a three power drone that does this i would probably honestly rather have this i think this causes more chaos in the enemy ship so i'm gonna put this in s tier i think it causes way more chaos and just helps you better you're not going to be killing ships with drones for the most part. I think this does its job perfectly. For a combat drone, I think this is Loki the best thing you can get. Full repair drone. Actually pretty goddamn good. But put it in A tier, I think. Because it costs a drone part and it repairs 3 to 5 damage, I believe it is. Yeah, 3 to 5 damage. That's pretty good for one drone part. If you're doing a run that is not solely focused on drones or you have just like a metric shit ton of drone parts you can just get pretty much free hp all the time you know every like five jumps you pop this boy out he heals you up a, a bit you probably get like one drone part you probably get like you know five drone parts on average per five jumps something like that that's good deal <laughs> like free hp pretty much so it can really help you sustain in a lot of ways i definitely think um now obviously it's not as good to like use all the time like it doesn't really do anything other than that so out of battle it can be really helpful for a build but i probably wouldn't buy it in the store but i think its use is definitely actually pretty helpful so i would not be too like I, i've used that strategy tons of times to like heal my own ship if i have a drone system and i don't need drone parts as much like i'm not relying on them until maybe the flagship i can just pop these out every so often get some hp and i think it's really really helpful Okay, Ion Intruder Drone. Pretty good. But I think I like the regular one a little better. Still pretty decent. Um, hmm. Which one? I'm just trying to think which one I want to place a little higher. They both cost the same power, so I mean, it's kind of up to your preference of which one you like. This one has more HP, so I think it might be a bit more useful. Like, the, the Ion is good, but you have... There's so many other Ion weapons, you know? Pretty much, it, yeah, it causes a breach, which is good, and it distracts the crew, which is also good. But the Ion effect you can get from Ion bombs, Ion blasters, whatever, right? This one, the boarding effect and kind of hurting the enemy crew that badly, because this doesn't actually hurt enemy crew. It just kind of stands there. <laughs> I think this one is a little bit better. I think I'm going to put this one in B tier, because I, I respect it as like a, a a boarding supplement you know if you have a boarding crew and you have drone parts you know whatever ship that may be uh like the mantis b has this i think sending this over can be really good plus it helps with drones like ai drones they don't have oxygen so they can't really board so that's kind of what the mantis b has this you can send it over it can blow up with the ship which is good the biggest thing i don't like about this is that you can't control where it goes and so on like drones, which it's primary uses, you know, you have, say on one side of the drone ship, you have like their shields and their weapons. That's where you want to go, right? It sends it over to like their engines and the empty room. And you're just like, okay, well, thanks for nothing. So that's kind of annoying. And 
but I do think it's a little bit, I don't know, is this C tier? I don't know, I just don't use these boarding drones that much. If I'm going to board ships, okay, I, here's the way I see it. If I'm going to use drones to begin with, I'm going to use like these type of drones. I think these move the needle on your run way more than like these drones do. If I'm going to board and I want to have these drones supplementing, I don't really want to have them supplementing. I'd rather have power for other stuff and I'd rather just focus on boarding with my crew. I don't think these things are as good. That's kind of the point. They're not as good as borders. They're drones, right? But yeah, I don't know. I, I think they're okay. They're better than like this. But I just think that... I think this one's definitely better than the Ion Intruder. Again, I don't use drones that much. So I'm probably just talking out of my ass here. Maybe you guys have had great runs with these. All I'm saying is I've had hundreds of wins in the games. And used these in them probably once or twice. Take that what you will. So this is the Shield Overcharger. And this is the Overcharger Plus. Which I think the Stealth C has. So, I mean, this is obviously just better than this one. It's kind of like the flak advanced or advanced flak or whatever. Kind of unfair to rank, I guess. But either way. Overcharger kind of has some utility. Kind of has some utility. You know, making a small Zoltan shield to your ship is pretty helpful. But it doesn't help that much, I guess. I don't know. It puts up one layer of shield, and then it takes kind of a long time to go around again and put up another one. So it, it does help, but I don't think it helps as much as it's worth, right? Especially because it costs three power. I'd rather just three power. I'd rather just put two power into my shields and have a normal layer of shields permanently, right? Now, obviously, that's a bit of a... You can't compare that, right? Because the prices are different and what you get and everything, but two power can go into my shields or three power can go into this to get one Zoltan shield every like eight seconds or, or whatever it is. And it, yeah, it increases in time. So like if you get one layer up, you can't really get a second layer up. It takes longer. The enemy's probably going to shoot it down, right? So in order to get like a full Zoltan shield, they have to be not shooting, in which case you don't even need shields to begin with. So I respect it a little bit, but I'm going to put it in C tier. I'm going to put the... Like, look, this one's better, yes, but they're the same thing, okay? Just don't worry about it. I just don't think... It's it's cool in concept, and it's, like, okay, but I don't think it executes what it does as well as you would hope it does. Like, getting this thing the first time, you're like, dude, I can make a Zoltan shield! And then you're like, okay, it blocked, like, one laser, and then the missile's coming, so... Okay. It, you can't really, like, control... I mean, you, I don't even know. Maybe you can depower it and then repower it quickly when the missile's coming. I don't know. I've never played around with that much, so if it can do that, I, I guess it's a little better, but it's just the lack of control on drones is what really makes me not use them as much, and so these ones not caring about the lack of control, and that's kind of their point. They just randomly, sporadically hit the enemy ship is what I like. So I don't think these are that good, and system repair drone, finally, I actually think it's pretty decent. So if you pick one of these up, they're super cheap, like, to sell. I mean, to buy as well, but to sell, they don't really give you that much money. They cost one drone power. So, like, if you have drones, having one of these, just if you don't need to use, like, a combat drone that you have, and one of your, you know, systems blows up, then you can turn this thing on. Even better is, it doesn't, it uses a drone part to create, but then it just sits there, I think. So, it doesn't really, like go away you kind of use a drone part and it just kind of hangs out i'm pretty sure and maybe i don't want to say that factually maybe it doesn't i haven't used this in so long but the point is i think it's pretty good it's like the uh it's like when i tack on missile launchers or ions things to my runs this is a good thing to tack onto a drone system for one power you can just have it help out and repair and repair is crazy quick and it moves around doesn't need oxygen in a pinch right if your oxygen's down maybe this can save you so i think it's also I think for drones, I think it's an A tier because it's just so cheap and it's so like universally helpful. Having things repaired is actually really good. So I actually respect it a decent amount. And that's it. That is uh, the drone tier list. Shout out Freds and Kyle for making this thing. I'm sorry to offend so many people with this. People probably, the, the drone fans out there are going to be like, dude, how could you rate the anti-personal B tier? It's so good. I'm sorry, man. I just don't use these things that much and I respect what they do. But I think that 
other than these top tier ones, focusing on other things in a run is way more important and way more conducive to a win than trying to go for a full drone build. You know? Especially, like, like I'd way rather have a hacking and a cloaking as my systems than a drone control. But those are the drones, in my opinion. We didn't make an E tier. Whatever. Let me know what you guys thought of both these tier lists. Here's the drone one. Here's the race one one more time. And yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, how much you disagree and hate my tier list. I want to burn it down. But yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any more tier lists, but they are a ton of fun to make, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So thanks so much. I'll see you guys.